Yeah, I I agree with you. It's very hard to make a judgment without knowing all the information. Um, however, however, I have this. I have this speech. I have a, I have a speech. I have many speeches uh, on the internet about education, and one of them is the 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 principle of business and client and in the principle of business and client school is the business and the student is the client really the student is the subject of the client who are actually the parents but the parents are pushed to one side by the education system mm. yeah you can't educate your children by yourself because they will learn too much. That's the truth. Um, <laughs> and, um, and that's dangerous for the, for the school because it's dangerous for the collective because school is a collective. Um, anyway, if somebody comes into your business and they buy a product and there's something wrong with the product, I don't, let's take an example. Let's say they buy this. Oh, look, here's my, here's my Tatra Bank uh, um, little, <laughs> little, little key card thing, which I have here. This is, this is, this is probably the only one in Scotland. Right? So, yes, I believe. <laughs> right. No, Tatra uh, Bank actually provide good services. Their, their internet is mm -hmm. really good. Yes, really good. yes, yes. It's really good. Yes, I know. I, I have two. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, so let's say they, they somebody buys this in the shop and say it's broken. Well, they, there's something wrong with it. They take it back to the shop. Imagine the shop punishing the customer or giving the customer a fine because they took something back and said there's something wrong with it. Mm. Right? Well, that, that would be crazy, yeah. But that's what education does. Mm. Yeah, so the, the student takes the work, does the work, finishes the work, and then gets punished mm. for finishing the work. So you're punishing you know, I, the client. You know what you should be proud of? You should be proud of the fact your son told you the truth. I, I go back to... Um, well, first, I, I sympathize with the, the story. Um, uh, and I go back to the business client relationship right where if you mm -hmm. if you're a business and you threaten your clients I mean that's not a business that's the mafia yeah mm -hmm. as a parent you're the client and mm -hmm. the school is threatening you and your family personally that's not that's not business that's mafia mm. Yeah, because, because mm -hmm. yeah, this this is this is mafia because basically they are saying to you, we can destroy your son's future. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's well, your your son is a man in a world of children. Your son mm. is a man in a world of children. The, the, the teachers are behaving like children. Mm. And your son is behaving like a man. The man will test the borders, the boundaries, and the limits of everything. That is the man, not the boy. Mm. The boy is the scared, frightened in individual um, who follows every rule, who follows every order, who never questions everything. The man is different. The man is ready for the challenge. The man is not afraid. Mm -hmm. So your son is a man already. And he is in a world of children. Mm. And that explains his behavior. Because he knows he can do what he wants. He knows that he will get punished for it, but, but that doesn't matter because he's being punished by children. The school thinks that there's something wrong with you. And the school is trying to correct you. Mm. 
and this is what all authoritarian systems do. Go and read George Orwell's 1984. It's the ultimate book on authoritarian systems. Hmm. And um, they are trying to convince you of something that they can't convince you of. They're trying to convince you your son is not a good student. And because they can't convince you of that, they will attack you personally. They will attack your intelligence. And and that's that's all they've got. They don't have anything nice to say. They don't have anything nice to do. They don't have any positive reinforcement or encouragement to bring to the table. All that school can offer, all that school can offer intelligent people is a waste of time and punishment. That's all that school mm -hmm. can offer intelligent people. I don't know. Well, it's um, as as you said that the school is trying to solve a problem that the school made. Mm -hmm. The school is. Uh, the school probably spends more time with your son than you spend with your son during the school year. I don't know. Well, the um, teachers do. Collectively, the teachers do, right? Collectively, the teachers of your son spend more time with your son than you do. That would be a natural assumption. I don't know. Maybe the, the teachers of the school spend maybe six hours a day with your, your son, right? So mm -hmm. this means... This means that they have a bigger effect on your son than you, collectively. They have a bigger mm -hmm. effect. So what are they complaining about? They have mm -hmm. more time to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it's uh, like, As I said, when you blame the client or the customer for the problem, it's... Uh, it, it, that's that that's ridiculous that's absolutely ridiculous what is the job of the school the job of the school is is to uh, um, it should be to to manage the needs or to fulfill the needs and requirements of the student but um, obviously it's not um, in times when there is uh, pushback or feedback or rebellion um, I think that's when you need more freedom. You need more free space. Um, mm -hmm. So what I would look to do, I'd look to say to the school, look, if you can't use the time productively, then I will ask for an individual study program for my son. I will create an individual study program personally, and that will give my son more more time for his needs which we can deal with and the school doesn't have to deal with it because the school can't deal with it obviously so mm -hmm. um, uh, if it's too much yeah I would say to the school because I'm because I'm because I'm arrogant right I would say to the school if you can't <laughs> deal with it if you can't deal with it as professionals then let me deal with it Bad connection. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would say to them, if you can't deal with it, then let me deal with it. Yeah. If I would say, if you can't deal with it, if you can't handle it, then get out of the picture. Right. This is obviously mm. not the place for you if you can't handle it. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, and I would look at it in terms of time, and I would say, okay, your teachers get more time with my son than I do, and yet you're saying that 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 this problem has developed. Well, this problem has developed with more contact on your side than on my side. So what are you doing wrong? You want to blame my son? You don't like my son? Okay, well, then I'll take my son out. I'll do something else with my son. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll find something else for him to do. I'll find out what he wants to do. Because um, uh, a lot of the time school is just daycare. For intelligent students, school is just daycare. It's just a safe place for the children to be while the parents are working. Right? Now, your, your son... A, a lot of children don't understand what it is to be independent. But your son is in a different situation. Your son sees that you and your husband in the work that you do have some level of independence. You have some level of control. 
And your son is exercising independence and control. This is behavior modeled upon his parents. Yeah, mm. if you think something needs to be done, then you go and do it or you employ someone else to do it or you make it happen. Your son has opinions and is exploring what is happening when he tests out life, mm. when he tests out his opinions. Uh, He's modeling, I think, he's modeling that behavior on the concept of independence, which is what happens in when, when people have their own businesses. Mm. When a lot of children, their parents don't have their own businesses, they work for other people, they have this nine to five or eight to four routine during the day, they have to follow the rules made by others. Um, they have to do what they're told to do, what the boss tells them to do constantly on a daily basis. Um, you know, the, the boss says, jump, and they say, how high? And, <laughs> right. And, yeah, and the last, I, I think the last element of, of growth happens very quickly. Uh, and what I mean by that is developing to the stage of becoming a woman or a man or whatever. It, it's, it happens like this. Right? One day mm. they're following the rules and doing everything that they're told to do, and the next day they're like, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm. Enough is enough. The, the process to get to that point is slow and, and difficult, but that point is just one point in time. And beyond that point in time, you have to give people more, more freedom. Um, and it's freedom with conditions, it's freedom with understanding, um, because I, I think that conditions exist everywhere with everything. Um, mm -hmm. And um, there are rules, there are limits, and there are, there are punishments to things. But um, I think the freedom is important. Like, boredom, like at the beginning you said, my son said he was bored. Boredom just means you're not free to do the things you need to do. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. When you boredom is a trap. Boredom is boredom is is an inner state in the human mind which is a conflict. It's a state of conflict because you're bored because you know what you need to do but you can't do it because the rules that you have to live within tell you it's not possible. Mm -hmm. And then, then you get what's called behavioral problems, which are not real. They're synthetic because school is not real. Mm -hmm. School is not a real place. It's not a real environment. There's nothing in the world that you will meet that is sane and sensible and logical that functions like a school. Nothing. Nothing. A school is... Um, in the 18th century... Social engineers designed the panopticon, and the panopticon was the perfect prison. It was the perfect mm -hmm. prison. And the prison was designed as a circle, so that prisoners here, they could see all the prisoners here, and all the prisoners here could see the prisoner here. So not like mm -hmm. the, the, the straight lines or the rows, not like rows, but it was designed as a circle. Mm -hmm. And it was called the perfect prison because when you are under constant observation, you can't be yourself. Mm -hmm. And school was a development of the panopticon <laughs> where where none of the students would ever be allowed to be individuals or to be allowed to be on their own or in a place where they were not observed by people. And men need their freedom. Young adults need their freedom. They need their space. Yeah. They... They need to express themselves. And if they're not allowed to explore and express themselves, they they keep everything inside and it, it explodes. And you're, 
Your son is probably tired of keeping everything inside. Mm. He's probably tired of not being able to say what he needs to say, not being able to say what he wants to say, not being able to communicate with people that he wants to communicate with, um, being asked to perform silly, stupid, pointless tasks, being asked to read something that he already understands, being tested on things that he already knows, um, of following rules that make no sense, but they should just be followed because they're rules. Um, you know, men challenge the status quo of things. And that the status quo or the status quo is is what is the school and the school system and the school rules. And he's challenging that. And the teachers in the school don't like it. It's a threat to their system. Because if one ant stands up, then all the ants will stand up. And there will be a mighty revolution against the system and it will be out of mm. control. Because if one nail stands up, you must get the biggest hammer you can find and hammer that nail down. Because if you stand up like a nail in the system, you will be knocked down. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it, it's very militaristic in its principles. Um, it's not very encouraging because When you love, it, it comes down to love. It, it's really stupid, but it comes down to love, right? Because when you when you love people, you give them freedom because you trust them. When you don't love people, mm -hmm. you don't give them freedom because you don't trust them. Mm -hmm. There you That's go. That's true. Mm -hmm. They don't. So they, they <coughs> school. I see. I'm, love doesn't appear in the school curriculum because there's no space for it. Mm -hmm. Because it goes against all the, the principles that are that are taught there um, uh, which is crazy because it's a, it's an emotion that we need to manage within our own lives and is extremely important um, and the um, your son is displaying the characteristics of leadership but he's displaying the characteristics of an adolescent leadership because he's not being allowed to 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 do other things he doesn't have other res responsibilities and uh, um, that's the dangerous element that the dangerous element is when you seek to please the children around about you and i don't just mean the other students, but the, the other teachers as well. When you live to please the teachers, when you live to please the other students, when you live to be a comedian, when you live to be a joker, when you live to pee in the schoolyard, <laughs> right? That's... Just, why is he doing that? He's doing that because he'll get a reaction from the other students and maybe the teacher as well. And so when you seek to please people who are less intelligent than yourself, you don't give yourself any advantages. Um, and that's the dangerousness of, of the school. The dangerousness of the school is that you, you spend your time pleasing stupid people rather than invest mm -hmm. your time developing your own skills. So, um, you know, I'm sure he'd be... He'd be happier playing floorball, right? Give him a stick and a ball and he'll run around all day or most of the day. Maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't know his character, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there's things that he would prefer to do. So um, we, we, we can't expect intelligence from a system that doesn't understand love. We, we can't. We, we, we've got to, it's, it's control and manipulation. Um, and uh, um, it's it's funny, it's comedy, right? For intelligent people, problems in school are, are sort of big comedy because people understand it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's it's not the system that works. It's it's the individual people that work. Mm. The system doesn't work. It's the people that work. It's the students who do the work. 
the students do the work and the teacher get, the school gets all the credit. I mean, that, that's madness. Mm -hmm. uh, the students do all the studying and the school, the school, the, the school gets all the credit. And uh, um, so I think your son is also future minded. I think future mindedness is extremely important, especially in business. Um, a lot of people can't see the future. They, they don't understand. They don't know tomorrow, next week, next month. If your son is playing with the rules because he understands that he's already somewhere else, that he's very future minded. He's like, <laughs> I, ha he's, he's, he's like I, I have the future already. Yes. Why do I need the present? And that's, that's a really advanced social skill and business skill. Um, and uh, is, is, is very important because you then avoid the problems that I mentioned earlier, such as the, the problems of, of projection where you can see the negative road in the future. If, you, if you've got future mindedness, you can choose what is positive um, about what is going to happen. So, uh, so that, that's, that's really, really good. And um, I, I, hmm. I'm still, I'm still waiting for, for something really smart and progressive to happen somewhere <laughs> in the school. I'm still waiting. Um, and I, and I've, I've worked in education all my life and I'm still waiting for that to happen. I haven't, hmm. I haven't ever seen it there. Are good people understand when and how to do the right thing so um mm. it's a it's a little uh. game <sighs> yeah it it's not what we think it is i have written many articles on the history of education it's not what we think it is um mm. i went to all the schools in this this region and i said i can i said i'd like to talk to your students about leadership I'd like to come into a class and talk about things that will help them prepare for the future. I'd like to see how well prepared they are and I'd like to see if I can help them. You know how many schools mm -hmm. were interested? <laughs> I'm sure. sure. Yes. Mm. Zero. Mm. I Zero. can imagine, yes. Mm. Zero, because, because it's all planned out, it's all organized, it's all perfect. Mm. And somebody like me would destroy their perfect system. Mm. So um, they don't want help because mm -hmm. the social agenda of the of the schools is is both complicated and impossible. At, at, at the same time, it's uh, realistically, everybody is trying so hard to manage their own problems. The idea that they could manage a school is just impossible. Uh, they, they can't even manage their mm. own problems. So how they mm. could manage a school is, uh, is just, it's, 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 it's a joke from my perspective that, uh, that mm. it would, it would ever really be possible. I have a lot of sympathy. Like my, I studied teaching originally, and my mother was a teacher for 40 years. A lot of my clients are actually teachers. Mm -hmm. um, they are trapped within the system and trying to understand why, when they have a good idea, nobody will listen to them. Yes. Yes, it is a, yes sometimes it is a, not, the, on, not hanging on a people, but on the system. Yes. Well, mm. yeah, th there's a lot of teachers who have great ideas, but there's mm. a, no space. Well, there's there's a much bigger there's a much bigger agenda um, at play. Um, there was a famous speech by American President Woodrow Wilson. Um, let's uh, see if I can find it very quickly because I wrote an article many years ago about this. Da, 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 da. 
Here's the quote. So I found that rather quickly. There's some benefits to the internet. Um, <laughs> here's the quote. Um, this is Woodrow Wilson from his address to the New York City High School Teachers Association, 9th of January, 1909. Um, the meaning of a liberal education. We want one class of persons to have a liberal education. And we want another class of persons, a very much larger class of necessity, meaning they must have it in every society, to forego, which means to give up, to stop the privileges of a liberal education and fit themselves to perform specific, difficult, manual tasks in society. So um, that was... Um, his address and that was um, part of the ad modern agenda for schools mm -hmm. which fits into the behaviorist uh, paradigm of the 20th century which began with schools in Prussia in pre-Germany where the, the PhD qualification began or was started by a, 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 I think a specific university in Prussia. And what people don't know is that every school in the world was designed based on the Prussian model. Mm -hmm. Every school system in the world and all of the people who founded the schools were sent by their governments to Prussia pre-1900 to get their PhD in education to then return to their country to found their school systems. And that is why mm -hmm. you can now go from any university to any other university that has a similar course in the world because it's all basically one system. The university, uni mm -hmm. being one verse, mm -hmm. all singing from the same paper. <laughs> the universe, the mm -hmm. university system designed to create one, um, as we see this principle of one appearing everywhere. Um, around the world, the, the uh, one world religious concept, the um, even down to the little things, like the unicorn. The, you know, the, the, the toys, the, the, the toys for girls, right? The, 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 the horse with the big Ah, yes, horn. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's everywhere, right? It's everywhere for kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uni. Yes corn the principle of one mm -hmm. the principle of one having one system having one way mm -hmm. um, it's 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 everywhere and it, it it started a long time ago and the behaviorists have been playing throughout the 20th century they played with the school system in the 1920s and 1930s they tried different ideas they looked at uh, human relationships how human relationships work look at the work of uh, began with pavlov um, and pavlov pavlov didn't pavlov is fin is famous for his experiments with dogs yeah but pavlov also experimented on children by drilling holes into their head. He was a psychopath. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Pavlov was a psychopath. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, if you go onto YouTube now, about 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, the, the, uh, some foundations released videos. They were videos of Pavlov experimenting on children. Oh. Yeah. It's crazy, really crazy. Um, there's a really good documentary about it, um, covering 
behaviorism in the 20th century. I wrote an article on it. Oh, can't, can't even remember my own articles. It was years ago, about 10 years ago, I wrote an article <laughs> about it. Um, and it, it covers how marketing and business and propaganda work together with big foundations, the Ford Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, because schools were not started by governments originally. In little, little secrets of history, yeah. So mm -hmm. school, schools were not started by governments. Schools were started by private foundations. And before that, by churches. They were religious mm -hmm. organizations originally. But then mm -hmm. the foundations started the schools. The private foundations started the schools. And then the foundations persuaded the governments to invest in the schools and to grow the system. Mm -hmm. But the schools were never started by the governments. They were started by the foundations. Mm -hmm. Because the foundations wanted to shape certain elements of society. You see from Woodrow Wilson's speech, they wanted to have a class of thinkers and a class of workers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, this was part of what World War I was about um, and part of what World War II was about because World War II was just World War I Part II. Um, they just needed time to have more people because they ran out of people. Um, there was not enough people to finish the First World War, so they had to wait for the babies of the, that generation to grow up into adults so that they could have the second part of the war. Um, because you look at the time period, it's just enough time to have just enough more adults to continue the war. Um, so World War II was just the second part of World War One. And if you look at um, how the governments of the world allowed Germany to rebuild itself, it allowed Germany to build a war machine, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and this war machine was funded by industrialists from France and Britain and America. Mm -hmm. um, like a, Germans couldn't have their tanks without uh, without American oil and American engineering and um, and it, it's 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 all a big game, really. It's just all a big game. Um, and, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I know, I know, it's unbelievable. And um, of course, nobody wins a war, right? I mean, that's 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 the the tragedy. Nobody wins. Really, mm. nobody wins a war. It's society just transforms in certain ways, um, some positive, some negative. Um, and then you had the other social movements. You had the uh, you had the, the the movement of music. You know, the, the development of the the jazz in the early 30s, 40s changed society and culture. Then you had rock and roll in the early 50s, uh, which were these were giant social experiments. The Beatles. Um, through the Frankfurt School in Germany, that was a German psychological program. Um, look at uh, what happened out of uh, CIA mind control experiments in the 1960s. Uh, produced the the 60s of love and the LSD culture, and your Jimi Hendrix and Rolling Stones, and you know, hey, peace, love, and more mm. war in Vietnam. Um, and then. That produced the, the wild children of the 70s because the peace and love didn't work because the parents didn't do anything except take drugs. So all the children grew up to be wild in the 70s. That created the punk movement. And then um, and the punks didn't do very well with their parenting. So that created the, the dark new age movement of the 80s and the, what's called shoegazing and eventually Nirvana, which is you know everyone being depressed and looking down instead of looking up. And then rock and roll got us out of that, but then um, came the dark periods of metal and new metal and Metallica, and then gangster rap, which uh, which is where we're at now, which is just an attempt to keep people thinking, thinking at a lower level, basically. Mm. So, um, and it all fits into the education system. Um, and good people try to create good things from it, and and uh, it is it is it's always possible to make something good with with anything that we have. We just have to want it and work at it enough. But um, 
the, the social engineering is there. I'm trying to remember the name of the film. Give me a second. Let me... Um, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me see if my old website. I have a website from years and years ago with a lot of information stored at it. Nobody, nobody has access to it but me. Um, <laughs> seriously, I've, 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 it's stored online, but there's technological addiction. <laughs> George Orwell versus all the What's State the domain? Online. The domain. Oh, it's. It's hidden. I'll give you the domain. It's it's it's. I'll give you I'll give you a link to it. You can't find uh -huh. it unless you've got the actual link. You won't find it in search engines. But it's my original school website from ten years ago. But I hid it because the information on it is just far too um, um, it's far too dangerous for me. Basically, I won't get a job anywhere if people read what's on it. Um, <laughs> So state of mind is the state of mind, the psychology of control is, is, deals with the history mm -hmm. of psychology school. of control. Are we living our lives based on our, mm -hmm. yeah, I wrote this together with, um, and it's got at the bottom, it's got all of the links to all of the examples mm -hmm. of the different experimentation within society and there was a film made uh, it's uh, I think Zuzana Senkova yes. Senkova mm. no disposition there is no video there should be a reading list at the uh, at the bottom and uh, Here's the uh, here's the link to the film. The film is really really interesting. Um, deals with the history of psychology. Uh, one of the most important names to take note of is uh, is a man called uh, spelled this wrong. It's a man called Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays was the nephew of Sigmund Freud and what he did was he took Freudian psychoanalysis and created marketing. The whole 20th century of marketing was created as a development of Freudian psychoanalysis. So what we, mm -hmm. what we think is just selling a product is actually selling an idea. Mm -hmm. And it's all based on a lot of the principles of, of Freud, and the um, the documentary link I've sent you goes into that. And uh, I think I have an article. I think I have. If I use the search box and search Edward Bernays, no, I have a literature. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Not important. Um, Books. He wrote. He wrote a number of books. The most famous of which was called Propaganda. <laughs> mm -hmm. And propaganda was the original word for marketing. Before we talked about marketing, we talked about propaganda. Mhm. Mm yes. Yes. And it it it, it got a negative. Um, it got negative, yeah, negative associations because the Germans used it, over overused mm -hmm. it in uh, their yes. build up to the Second World War, and um, it's interesting because propaganda is actually a religious word. It's actually pro-pagan. Pagan? What is it? Pagan. Pagan uh, of the devil, worshiping the devil. Uh huh. Yeah, it's the opposite of Christian. The opposite of Christian. Ah, pagan. Pohan, Pohan, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So marketing <laughs> is propaganda. Mm -hmm. And propaganda is pro-pagan. Mm -hmm. Influencing or manipulating people. Mm. Now it doesn't. It doesn't have to be negative. And uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be negative. <laughs> but um, originally, it was a religious term 
for the using the devil to influence people or to change people. Mm -hmm. uh, crazy, crazy, <clears throat> crazy. And there's a, there's a, there's a lot of that within within language. There's a lot of that within language. But um, what is important? So state of mind psychology or control is. Uh, is important. It's worth reading the article. The article goes into social Darwinism, B.F. Skinner, uh, Donald Cameron, who was Scottish, unfortunately, but Donald Cameron was the head of CIA mind control projects. Um, this was a uh, how to manipulate and control society uh, after the Second World War. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's got a section on um, B.F. Skinner, Donald Cameron, Edward Bernays, um, Spanish neuroscientist Jose Delgado, Carol Quigley, um, Milgram experiments. Um, so uh, it's all it's all interesting from a marketing perspective and understanding history that school. <coughs> School can be a great place. School can be a great place. It, be, it can be a great place to meet people. It can be a great place to learn things. It can be a great place to have experiments. It can be a great place to uh, to grow up. It can be a very safe place as well, which is very important in in modern society. And um, and we just we just have to be careful. We just have to be careful and not be not be pushed around, you know, just, as I said, the, the school wants to tell you what to do. It's... Hmm. The people in school are important in their own little world, but outside of their world, they don't mean very much. Hmm. Yes, it's true. Hmm. Yeah. The pr who is the principal outside of the principal's office? He, he could be somebody very important and influential and positive for society, but usually they're not. It's a political position. Mm. It's, a, it's a political position. But um, I think that the real education begins at home. That's what I think. At home, mm. home always comes first. Home is always number one. You know, did, did the classic, does your child behave like this at home? Well, no. Well, then the problem must be the school. Because <laughs> he doesn't behave like this at home. Because at home we have rules and we have respect. Traditionally, teachers in society were the older generation. Age 50 mm -hmm. to age 70. Because they had life experience. So this is, for example, someone like me. I would still be in training to be a teacher in history because I'm not 50 years old. But mm -hmm. now we have people age 25 who are teaching in schools. So they, they go to school, they like a subject, they go to teacher training school, college, they study that subject, they study to teach, they study the pedagogy, which, you know, pedagogue means master of slaves. You know that. <laughs> pedagogue oh. means master... <laughs> Of slave. Yeah, pedagogue means master of slaves. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of the word originally. Yeah. So, if you get the first definition of pedagogue is is child walker. But why were you a child walker? Who was the child? The child was a slave, right? In in history. Mm -hmm. And the walker was the person giving the child punishment. Mm-hmm. You meant to give punishment to children. So so. Pedagogue means master of slaves. That's the actual meaning of the word. And and if you so you, you you get your pedagogy degree, you're 25 years old, you finish school, you get a job. My argument is you don't know anything at that point in time. <laughs> That's my argument. You have no life experience, basically. Now it doesn't mean that you can't be a good teacher. It doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it means you don't have the experience you need to make it interesting. Because mm -hmm. real life is what makes things interesting. And if you don't have enough real life experience, then then you can't make your subject 
entertaining and interesting for the students because the key to influence is attention the key to attention is entertainment mm. and the key to entertainment is having the experience the personal experience and understanding what your subjects what your clients what your customers what your viewers what your students need and if you're if you're not able to entertain then you can't I mean, what is what is television it's entertainment why do people watch it? it's entertainment why do people watch films entertainment why do people listen to music because it entertains in a certain kind of way and music was music in history was actually medicine this is what another thing that people forget to do music was actually medicine in history um, what yeah. does it mean, medicine in history? Medicine. It was used to cure sickness and illness. Music was used to cure sickness and illness in history. It was medicine. Mm. Ah, medicine. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Medicine. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. me okay. Medicine. Med, meaning between, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. cine, as in cinema, meaning the soul. Meaning coming, coming between the soul. Mm -hmm. And music in history goes back to one of the first codifications that we have is by Pythagoras. Pythagoras codified mm -hmm. music and Pythagoras also wrote the second most read book after the Bible in human history. Um, but you won't see that on any top seller list. Anyway, um, Pythagoras codified music to use it as medicine and he traveled around using music as medicine to heal people who were sick. Mm -hmm. It's powerful, powerful stuff. That's why, mm -hmm. because music changes, yeah, music changes your emotional state. Yes. I'm happy, I'm feeling good, I've got <laughs> sunshine in my back, da, 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 whatever. Um, I can't see me loving nobody but you, ba -da -da -da, whatever. Um, so um, it, 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 it changes everybody's um, emotional state. Mm -hmm. Now, when you understand that, you understand the, um, the, the, the medicine is also poison, you know, pharmaceutical, uh, mm -hmm. antibiotic, whatever. Medi medicine is also poison. Poison is also medicine. And so... The wrong kind of music can actually kill you or make you sick, mm. basically, kill you or make you sick. So, so that it's very powerful. We have to, we have to be very <coughs> careful. And that, and that's 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 something that they don't teach in school. They're, oh, Pythagoras triangles. It's like no, Pythagoras was was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> There, there are music that exists at different frequencies. Um, the, I use, there, there's binaural music, which um, is bitonal music, which creates different harmonies by playing in stereo different tones. Mm -hmm. And what it does is causes the brain to be more active mm -hmm. and theoretically absorb more information. I use mm -hmm. that. I use that for my podcasts, for my internet presentations. Uh -huh. I use that in the background mm -hmm. because it it helps with focusing attention on the language. So it is also marketing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we, we <laughs> <laughs> every no <laughs> no knowledge is the basis. Of profit. Hmm. Knowledge is the basis of profit. And there are two kinds of profit financial and spiritual. Right? And, and, and mm -hmm. anyway, so um, yeah, the, the people forget that, that the origins of education were in excellence in all areas, specifically music. Uh, mathematics, uh, dance, um, which was a form of physical control, 
So um, th those are some mm -hmm. of the um, the trivium and the quadrivium were the original subjects that were studied in school. The classical schools of ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Well, you don't hear anything about that today. Well, school, education, we need more we need more sex education. It's just, it's funny. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a big, big comedy. Because the original education was called the Trivium. And uh, let me just give you a link. Trivium Education. Uh, just the Wikipedia is usually quite good. Um, Wikipedia, great place to start, bad place to finish. But say uh, if we... Uh, as, as known as trust, rhetoric, logic, grammar. Uh, grammar, logic, rhetoric should be the three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grammar, logic, and rhetoric. So um, that's that. Those are those were the foundational principles of education: to teach language, to teach logic, and to teach speech. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was the first level, the trivium. Um, you know, grammar, well, we'll talk about that another day. It's too big a topic to talk about today, but um, um, grammar is actually religious in its origin. But uh, uh, after the trivium, there was a second level that was created called, called the quadrivium. So the, the trivium was grammar, logic, and rhetoric. The quadrivium was arithmetic, astronomy, music, and geometry mm -hmm. so um, here's a simple text from Google the trivium consists of grammar logic and rhetoric while the quadrivium consists of arithmetic astronomy music and geometry mm -hmm. so your lower education was grammar <coughs> logic and rhetoric and your higher education was arithmetic astronomy music and geometry mm -hmm. these were the original subjects before it was corrupted into the modern form of arts and sciences and mm -hmm. business and practical skills and, and, and sports and things like that. Um, and this is important because, number one, most teachers don't know about this. Mm -hmm. Most ask, oh, how do you know if a teacher is a good teacher? Very simple. One question. Tell me about the history of education. Mm. If you don't know the history of your topic, you don't know your topic. How do you know if a teacher is a good teacher? Tell me about the history of education. If they can't mm -hmm. tell you about the history of education, they don't know anything. Mm. Because anyone who doesn't know their own history doesn't deserve to teach anything at all. So... Um, Simple. The second, the second thing is, to, the second thing is to learn about a topic and then ask the teacher how much they know about the topic and double check if the information is, is correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is a, a really good way to know if people are telling the truth or not. Um, mm. So th this is important when looking at the transformation of education. Um, edu education, educate, educate means actually the original meaning is to bring out of a person what is naturally inside of the person. Mm -hmm. To draw out, educate, that's what it means. It, it, which is the opposite of to inform. Information, information, form meaning to shape. To give information is to shape people. And the original mm -hmm. meaning of education is the opposite. It's to bring out of a person, not to put into a person. Mm -hmm. So I think that this terminology helps us understand what a good education is. Because with our children, we know with our children that we don't want them to be exactly like us. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. we have a good side and a bad side. And we want them to have our good habits, not our bad habits. And yes, we want them, yes, of course. And we want them to be themselves as well, so that they can develop mm -hmm. their own character. 
We want to we want to pull out of them. We want to draw out of them their own character. So when you constantly give people information, it's actually the opposite of education. Strange. There's a difference mm -hmm. between going to school and getting a schooling mm -hmm. than educated, being educated. And the teacher-student relationship is very similar to a conversation. The real teacher-student relationship is very similar to a conversation. And that is manipulation because convert means to change. Yes. So conversation exists to change people. Mm -hmm. And teaching, the teacher to student relationship is like the conversation because just because somebody is teaching does not mean that somebody is learning. The same way, mm -hmm. just because somebody is speaking does not mean that somebody is listening. Listen. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I th I, and I think teachers forget that. Mm -hmm. the, most teachers think their job is to correct the world. We're here to fix all these broken people. Mm. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Question mark. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. Broken people. Maybe. Right. Um, I don't know. That was that was a tangent from everything that I wanted to discuss today. Um, um, what, the one, th one final thing that I want to say. One final thing. Yes. You said something that was really important earlier, and that was that you you recognized that the teachers had excuses for the actions. Mm -hmm. You right now, a lot of people don't recognize that, and it's very important to recognize that what the teachers are saying is the excuses, mm -hmm. and excuses toxic behaviors mm -hmm. so that the teachers are criticizing the behavior of your son at the same time as they are displaying themselves toxic behaviors mm -hmm. so they yes it's they, it's true mm -hmm. they, they, it's very manipulative it's very manipulative uh, it's very uh, these these people are crafty, manipulative. They're crafty, mm. crafty, craft, craft as an art and craft, making things mm -hmm. happen. Craft. They are crafty, very manipulative, mm -hmm. and uh, they blame your son for the same thing that they are doing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be really careful with these people. <laughs> <laughs> yes.